I hope you all are very well. And here in this session, we are starting a new chapter that is sampling process and data collection. So we are going to focus completely here on sampling process. So basically, if we are going to define the sampling process, it is a fundamental concept in various fields like statistics, like signal processing, like data analysis and research methodologies. The aim of sampling process is to capture representative information from the population or data set, which allows us for making some generalized patterns, some generalized solutions or some kind of insight without having to examine the entire population. So let's say that uh, we are having a particular population or let's say it is it can be any country or here let's say some election is going to be there then if we want to predict some pre predetermined results before actual election what we are going to do we are going to collect samples from this population we need to collect some random samples there are many techniques of collecting the samples that we are going to discuss in our upcoming lectures but here we are just focusing on sampling process right so out of this particular country it may have a very large population but we need to collect some samples here and from the samples we need to pattern we need to generalize the patterns by asking them questions or by observing their behaviors or by generalized talk right so we need to create samples from large population as you know that it is not possible to select each and every individual from this large group so there is a thing there is a thing that we need to collect some samples from that large data sets right so this process of collecting the samples from large population or large data sets or from a large topic of any universe, this is called as sample process. Now there are various methods that we are going to learn, but before that, let's learn steps in sampling process. So what are the important steps in sampling process? The very first one is types of universe. So the very first step in developing any kind of sample design is we need to clearly define the set of objects. We need to clearly, clearly define set of objects that is called as universe, right? It can be uh, finite, it can be infinite, right? So let's say if I am talking about the set of uh, uh, population of uh, any city, it could be in a finite. If I am talking about uh, a set of workers working in a particular organization, it is also finite. But if I talk about, uh, let's say, the number of stars in the sky, number of stars in the sky, definitely it is an infinite universe, right? So we need to define the type of universe first. Thereafter, the second one is sampling unit. So in sampling unit, a decision has to be taken concerning a sampling unit. Selecting by select before selecting the basically sample. Sampling unit may be geographical, such as uh, you can say that let's say a state, or it can be like any city, or it can be like any colony. So we need to select some sample unit first. And it depends on the kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, state. Let's say if I'm talking about uh, uh, constructions, then I can talk about flat, I can talk about houses. If I Unit, then sampling unit can be of let's say family or it can be like let's say club or any group or any kitty party group anything so the second step is we need to uh, choose a very important and very precise sample unit for that thereafter the third one is sampling frame so in sampling frame we can also call it as a source list source list basically in this source list what you need to do you need to define that from where you have collected the samples, from where you have collected the samples, researchers must have to include it for reliability and trust purpose. If it is not there, then researcher must do the study and include the source list of the sampling. Okay, because it is very important for representing any population and we need that what is the source of that. 
Then after the fourth one, if we talk about size of sample. Now it is very important concern in any sampling collection that what could be the size of sample. If we are going to make a large size of sample, if we are going to do the medium size of sample or can we do the uh, small size of sample. So a small size of sample is also not uh, considerable and a large size of sample is also not considerable. So our focus should be on medium. The sample size should be medium depending on the set of universe, right? So let's say if any particular group is there, if we talk about population of a city, then the medium number of samples required from there. If we are talking about number of employees working any company, then medium number of samples. It should not be like that every employee is giving his or her, uh, uh, you can say that understanding or we are only selecting one or two, no, medium numbers, right? Not too much larger, not too much lesser. So size of sample we need to uh, decide first. Thereafter, parameter of interest. You know that uh, out of this population, there are many kind of people, many kind of samples would be there. That samples will be associated with some kind of characteristics, right? So if we want to uh, figure out, let's say if we talk about in a particular set and if we want to uh, figure out the uh, election data, then it is necessary that we need to select some characteristics, right? Let's say if we talk about some males or some females, then uh, these characteristics will also help uh, to make a kind of uh, average study. It should not be like that all the samples are male or all the samples are female. Right. It should be like all samples must contain some youngers, some olders, some middle-aged persons. It should be like that. So parameter of interest should be decided on the size of sample. Thereafter, budgetary constraint. Obviously, uh, cost consideration is important part. If we see according to the practical point of view, it is a major impact that is going to make on the sampling process. So we need to uh, choose, choose it as well. And thereafter, completion of all these uh, six uh, steps, we need to go to choose the sampling procedures. And there are various kind of sampling procedures that we are going to discuss in some next lectures. So after completion of this part, we need to choose, a researcher need to choose that what sampling procedure he or she is going to use for, uh, for a sampling or data collection method, right? For his research study or her research study. There are various methods. So uh, uh, what methods he or she is going to use, he or she is going to choose for his or her research studies, right? So that is the next part after budgetary constraints. So these are basically simple steps of sampling process. I hope it is clear, right? So in this lecture, we have just focused that what is basically sampling process, what is sampling, why it is important and uh, simple steps, right? In our next lecture, we are going to discuss about criteria of a research procedure and we are also going to learn about good characteristics of a uh, good characteristics of a sampling process, right? Good characteristics of samples, right? What is that we are going to discuss? And after that, we are going to discuss different, different types of sampling methods, right? So please stay tuned with us. Stay tuned. Do like, subscribe. And if you are having any doubt, confusion, queries, please feel free to ask. Have a very nice day. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.